Hi, my name is Tommy Prater and I'm from Denison High School and today I'm going to be doing a creative lecture over barriers to distance learning. One of the main problems we ran into when COVID first hit is how will school continue? Not only how will school continue, but how will kids that don't have the technology be able to turn in their work from home? One of the ways I thought of that we could do is a drop box box or a drop and pick up box. So the pick up box would work like kind of in the name. You'd go pick up your work, go home, do your work, and then come back and drop it off. Although a lot of parents might not like this because it's kind of a waste of gas driving there and back, but if they care enough, they will. So the, kid, the parent, we came up with an alternative for the parents that didn't want to do that idea. You could just turn in your work. But with that comes a lot of issues with like mail and when you mail something in, it can get lost in the mail and all that. And instead of your dog ate my homework, the mailman stole my homework, you know, stuff like that. So the drop box could just be a much simpler and the students could just simply pick up their work from the mailbox or like a mailbox system and someone could collect the work at the end of the school week. This could system could be proved to help us school according to the research provided by the National Center of Education Statistics. Another thing is, this <laughs> it happens in certain areas that don't have technology. Like I'm thankful for the fact that I get to present on this, but another kid from a different school may not have the opportunities that I have, especially from home. Because at home, I was thankful to have a laptop to do my work on. But another kid may not have that, which is a very disadvantage to those people. So for this, the students would kind of need something to turn their work into, or else they just wouldn't be successful. A lot of the inequity in classrooms is caused by where they live and how they grew up. So let me explain that a little bit. You do not take a person who for years has been humbled by chains and liberated him. Bring him up to the starting line of a race and say, you are free to compete with the others. And still justify a belief that you have been or completely fair. So what that's saying is like, you can't give someone that has great technology and say, here, do your work, and someone that has no technology and say, here, do your work, and they, it just won't be equal. These people won't have the same opportunities for each other. This person will do great, they have the technology good. This person, on the other hand, didn't have the technology. They won't be able to be as successful as this person. And inequity is just like, a, it's a real big problem in our classroom. And I have some ways that we could fix inequity. A creative way to address inequity in the classrooms would be a free summer camp. This would be where kids can go, get the materials they need, and have a great time during the summer while also getting some of the stuff they need to complete schooling, like pencils, paper, if we were to come back to a regular school. Or if we raise enough money in, the, in, a, uh, in a charity, we could get them potentially laptops or tablets. For this summer camp, it could be potentially granted by high school students and it could volunteer opportunities for those to aid in the community. We could also just have teachers there because another problem we ran into was students will bully other students if they don't have the stuff they have, like the money or the, uh, the like tablets and stuff like that. Other students will bully other students for that, so we thought it might just be teachers. But like us, we have, we have groups that have to get their to hours in to uh, stay in a certain group. So this could be some of their volunteer hours they can get into, because a lot of the people are really nice people. My proposition for addressing nationwide inequity would be to take a survey at households to find which areas have the worst inequity, and this could be all over the place. So we could take a survey all over the world and find out where we could really address those situations to bring money to those communities that need it. Middle class incomes have grown at a slower rate than upper tier incomes over the past five decades. Five decades, that's a really long time. From 1970 to 2018, the median middle class income increased from 58,100 to 86,600. A gain of 49% by comparison, the median upper the median income for upper class households grew 64% over that time. From 126,100 to 207,400, 
The share of American adults who live in middle class income households has decreased from 61% in 1971 to 51% in 2019. During this time, the share of adults in the upper income tier increased from 14 to 20%, and the share in lower income increased from 25 to 29. And that was from the pureresearch.org. All right. Thank you. Y'all have a good one.